I have a question to ask you guys and be completely honest with yourself. No bullshitting it or anything, but just be completely, completely honest with yourself. Do you truly believe God exists? Now, I know, I mean, I know there's going to be a bunch of questions asked and you know, just, I mean, just a lot in general. And I know, I mean, I know it's a, it's a really tough question to answer because you know, maybe all your whole entire life and your whole family has all believed in him. So you have just kind of made it to where you believe in him or just God in general. But like, ask yourself, genuinely think down. Do you think he is real? No one has ever seen the man. Like no one has. And everyone has a different depiction of him. Everyone does because the most common depiction of God and like Jesus and all the, and all of them are, you know, just white male. Like if God, for example, just a, a white guy with white hair, white beard, Jesus being his son. You no, know, the whole like brown hair and stuff like that and all that fun stuff. But when you really check the information when you really go back and you know read the bible and check descriptions of the guy you really start thinking who am i like who am i imagining like who am i depicting in my head on who god or jesus or any of those people are and again i mean i'm i'm catholic so i'm not trying to say oh yeah like trying to disregard anyone's religion because and that's also the thing though is when you also think about it um, why are there so many different religions? Why are there even religions in general? Like, actually think about that. Like, because on one hand, one religion may say only my God exists. Your God doesn't exist. So only mine does. So listen to what he says. Um, what's it called? Um, uh, fuck, I forgot what the term is called, but it's like, it's similar of just like, listen to what he says, follow us, become Christian, become Catholic, become this, become Muslim, become this, become that. And it's like, when you really think about it, where does, where, how did this all happen? Where does this all exist? Like, how did this all come to be? Like, why is, why is it, why do you believe that only your God exists and no other God exists, but yet the person, but yet someone else, like the person, let's say you're arguing against, they, they think different. They say my God exists, your God exists. Every, everyone may believe my, the same God that I think exists, but other people think of other God, their gods that exists, and that is okay. I accept everyone. Like if you don't want to accept my God, but you want to accept your God, that is completely okay. I'm just happy you believe in something. You believe in a God. That God has different, different like morals and all this fun stuff, different from mine. That's perfect. That that is completely perfect. Um. And yet, like, others will truly be pissed that you are telling them, like, I like I am okay that your God exists, but I don't like that you think your God is the only God. And and then it just kind of begs the question, is, like, God even real? Or is it just um, a depiction of, like, of like your spiritual following, I think it's what it, I think it's kind of like what I'm trying to say, um, because there are people who, um, you know, obviously will pray to God, pray things, pray for this, pray for that, pray for, like pray for all this to kind of exist, um, and kind of just happen, um, and kind of like God gave me strength, God listened to me, God this, God that. Sometimes it's like 
is it God that's doing that or is it just yourself doing it? Like if you tell God, oh, like, hey, God, I want to be rich. I want to I want to be rich. I want to be making a fuck ton of money or I want to be a millionaire. Never work a day in my life once I reach to that point and stuff like that. But if you never do anything about it, but you keep just praying and praying and praying and praying for it, but don't do anything about it. And you keep saying, you know, and you keep praying to God or Jesus, whatever. Then it's like, so does he exist? And he's not and if he exists, but he's not um, he's not making your your dream come true. Whose fault is it? Is it your God's fault or is it your fault? Because you're not taking the necessary steps to do that. And not just for like being rich. It could be for having like a healthier life. Could be for having a newer car or whatever the case may be. A healthier family. Just whatever the case may be. Like when you truly think about it, like is it all on God or is it just up to you? Like spiritually, like sometimes you have to look within yourself. Because I know people will say like, oh, God gave me the strength to live another day or God gave me strength to do that. God gave me strength to improve into myself. And sometimes I'm like, did he or do or was that you that finally said, hey, I need to stop being lazy and do something. Like, was it God that truly gave you that power or was it yourself that gave you that power? And like, and I'm going to say you're lying to yourself because again, religion is religion, religion is religion. I respect every religion, um, but it's just one of those questioning things of, you know, about, about just God in general, because there's people who, who don't believe in a God, um, but believe in science of, well, this happened because of science or this happened because of science. And people will say, no, this happened because of religion. This happened because of this. And this happened because of that. And there's people like me who say, you know, I believe like my beliefs are. I part of me truly believes there is something out there. There is someone above us watching. And sometimes I'm not sometimes I don't even think it's God in general. Sometimes I just think it's family members just watching over us, taking care of us, making sure that we are okay. Like, if, like making sure that they give us the strength that we need. Like, they're watching us and saying, hey, we see you. We see you're in pain right now. Let me give you some help. Let me give you the strength that I've been trying to give you or something like that. Uh, or maybe they talk to God and say that. Like, like really think about it. Um. Because sometimes it's um uh, like his with like because you know when people die, people who commit suicide and a bunch of other stuff, and people blame God. It's like why are you blaming God? Like when you're like when you're saying like God, why did you take my kid away from me? Or God, why did you do this? Or God, why did you do that? Like why are you being angry at God? Why why are you being angry at again something that doesn't visually exist like why are you being mad at that at them or whoever the case may be because again everyone has a different image of a god of their god that's why when you go to a store to uh, whether it be a bible store or just stores that do have pictures that depict jesus and depict god himself and stuff like that every picture is different no picture is the same Every picture is different, whether it be hairstyle, whether it be facial facial structures, whether it be the color of his skin and whatnot, which then begs the question, the question, the question. No one really knows how God exists. No one really knows how he looks like. No one does. Like literally no one does. And so then when people tell you this is how he looks, it's like, no, you you don't know how he looks because that's maybe how you depict how he looks. But that's not how I depict how he looks. But I believe that type that same God exists, but I don't believe that's how he looks. And people will try to fight you of no, 
my God is my God and my God is the only God. So then it, it almost, in a way, it almost brings a cult like following. Because, and the reason why I bring this up is because I w- watched the YouTube video of just like top 10 weirdest cults or something like that or gruesome cults or something like that. And it all begins with someone who says, hey, like God spoke to me and I'm the chosen one and kind of just shit like that. And then he starts getting followers and this and that and whatnot. And just how almost every single cult is similar in their own way about someone saying that God chose them. They're the chosen one. So you have to follow what I say and what I do. And this is and because this is the way that it's supposed to be. It's me listening to it and watching it. I'm like, you know. That actually begs the question, is that how Christianity, is that how Catholicism came to be? Is that how, like, the Presbyterians, is that how a lot of this stuff came to be? People basically said, hey, God said this, like, I am God's chosen one. Follow what I say. Follow what I do. Like, think about it. Is is that real? Like, is is that kind of just what it is like are we all or not just we all are just is everyone like in a cult like following when it comes to a religion like that like just really think like with um like with muslims how they don't eat pork like one oh, i mean again it's probably maybe all muslims or a bunch of other one or like different ones but i know the muslims that i talk to they don't eat pork neither of them not a single one of them eat pork they eat beef, they eat chicken, they eat fish, but pork is very sacred. Oh, excuse me. Pork is very sacred to them. They do not eat it one bit. And be, obviously because they have their own, they have their own beliefs. They have their own reasons why they don't believe in, they don't eat pork. But then yet you come to like Christianity and Catholicism and whatnot. We eat whatever the fuck we want. We eat pork, beef, chicken, fish, all that fun stuff. But then when you really look into the Bible, like when when it comes to Lent, um, that little time period where all you can really eat is fish, that's all we think about. That's all that's what we do. And people follow it. People follow it like a cult because they say that's what's supposed to be done. Lent is during this, just like with uh Muslims when they do oh fuck. Uh what's it called? Um Ramadan. When they do Ramadan and they basically you don't eat, you can only drink. Oh, I've been told different. I've been told you can only drink water and rarely eat, like barely eat. Like obviously you're not going to fucking starve yourself and kill yourself, but barely eat. Um, you, uh, um, like little bit of water and that's really it for a time period. That's what they believe because they believe that then cleanses their body and, and they survive. And so then it's one of those where it's like, I mean, obviously that's what they believe. That's what, that's what they believe it does. And so I don't know, like to me, it's interesting. Like things we do, things we believe in based on our religion. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know what to like. I don't know what to really say about it because, and again, I'm not judging any religion. It's just, it's weird on how we do it and how we th- believe on all that. And then people who criticize the people who worship Satan, like that's their religion. They worship Satan and they practice Satanism because that's what they believe. They believe his beliefs. And why are you judging their beliefs on what they believe be based on your religion? Sometimes saint people who who practice Satanism can be the nicest people. They just see things differently. People who are Jews see things differently than Christians and Catholics. People who are uh, who don't believe in a single religion, atheists, they think say think say they see things differently. They're not they're not saying your uh, your God doesn't exist. It's, they just see things differently. 
because I know I'm listening to a book right now called The Power of Now. And it's a uh, like a spiritual master, like teacher and shit like that. And one of the things that he said about like God and stuff like that is he believes that people people lie to themselves. People lie to themselves on there being a higher power, on there being a so-called God. People lie to themselves because they can't, they don't know how to find themselves spiritually. Like they don't know how to, how to find themselves with like how, how to find themselves deep, like how to really look into themselves deeply that they lie to themselves and say, well, like spiritually is like about God and stuff like that. Like they are lying to themselves because they genuinely can't, they like haven't found themselves because one of the things that he said, which honestly I was, it was kind of shocked because that it was said in a smart way of, of, uh, uh, what the hell was it? Oh, because you know, he, you know, he had his depression. He had his anxiety that one day, well, I think he was like 28 or 29, that one day he woke up and just did not want to do it anymore. He did not want to live anymore that he was genuinely there to ready to end it. Until just like he, but he said that he, he like, he looked deep within himself, deep within his mind. And he said, am I really trying to like basically kill or finish whatever you want to call it or end of, he was like, does, do I really want to end myself or do I, or am I trying to end my one life? Because he believes that. Well, his belief was that you are living two different lives and the life that you are trying to kill is the one you don't want to live anymore. And by killing your first life or whatever or however he put it, by doing that, you are able to live your second life. And which was honestly interesting because um, and again. I mean, again, I'm a Catholic, so I'm not trying to be like, oh, yeah, follow him, whatever. It was just interesting on what he said about you're not trying to kill yourself in general or end yourself in general. You're trying to end you're you're trying to end the life you currently are living so you can so you can live your second so you can live the second life that you're that's waiting for you. And again, he's not promoting to kill yourself. What he is saying is you you have to look deep within yourself. But I mean deep within yourself to truly find who you are and to truly find your second life. And because just think about it in general, like if you are constantly, but I mean constantly stressed with anxiety, depressed because of the life of the repeated life that you are living. Like that and you are you get miserable to the point where yes you want to end it you want to kill yourself and it's like are you do you want, truly want to end yourself or do you just want to end the life that you are living and by ending that life that you are currently living and you basically grow you you think of it like a cocoon you come become a worm you're in a cocoon and then you sprout into a butterfly Ending that life that you don't want to live anymore to start a whole completely different life is is needed. It could what it what could be needed because again, think about it. Again, I may be depicting it in a whole different sense, but this is just how I'm depicting it. And it's now you don't want to you don't truly want to end yourself. You want to end the life that you are currently living. Because you can be, you know, you can be working your minimum wage job or even just not in minimum wage, maybe an office job or just a job you don't like. And it because it's, let's say it pays well, but you just don't like it or it doesn't pay well and you just don't like it. And then you come home stressed about if you're going to eat or not because you paid all your bills or shit like that, that you're like, well... You know, you, you don't want to live like that anymore. So you decide to look within yourself and say, okay, I need to strengthen up. I need to do something about this. 
that you basically are you want to kill that part of your life you want to kill that life to start a new life to again not end yourself to kill that life that pra- that past life that current life you're living right now because by doing so you will truly see the benefit you will truly see like if once you want to get out of that of that loop and you let's say decide you know maybe i need to start getting a promotion so i can start getting paid more or you know maybe i need a maybe i truly true need to apply to a different job like i've been scared to do so because of being judged or whatever that you know a fuck it i'm gonna go ahead and do it because i'm tired of i'm tired of doing this job or your dream let's say like it's a business that you want to start that you said fuck it obviously still work your job but you say fuck it i'm gonna start this business because i've been pushing it off far too long or you decide you want to go back to school because you're tired of it and you want to you want to go back to school to get a degree to to get a different job like that's kind of like what it's kind of what he was saying or let's say even like you're overweight you're obese and you're tired of it you're tired of your sleeping problems, you're tired of your heart problems, you're tired that you can't bend down and tie your shoes without breathing heavily, and you're tired of that, you're ready to kill that life off to start a new one, that you decide to start going to the gym, you decide to start eating healthier, you decide to start proportioning your your meals and whatnot, that you genuinely start seeing a difference and you start saying this i feel happier now because i'm i'm changing something that you are killing off your old life to start a new life same with like you know like uh, like i said with the whole school and job thing you go to school whether you get an, an associates a bachelor's masters whatever the case may be and an opportunity opens up at the college and says hey you know you can become a like you find a psychologist, you talk to your psychologist there. If you're being, if you're trying to get a psychology degree, and now here you are, and they're giving you an opportunity to get a psychology job that pays way more than what you're doing, and you truly do love this job, you love that career, and bam, that would have never happened if it weren't for you killing your old job, and that old job, killing your past life to start this new life. Or your business, if let's say you start it, you're working, and three, four, five years later, it's booming to the point where you don't need to work your job, your part-time or full-time job anymore. You can finally start doing this, work your own, no, I want to say work your own hours, work the hours for you. You're working hours for your business, something you are creating or have created, and you want to maintain it, knowing that's yours, not... um. You're not working for someone else. You're creating something for you and to possibly help others to create more jobs in the future or something like that or just whatever the case may be. Like it's interesting when he was saying about that and saying how the whole because, you know, you can pray to God. You can pray to God of man. I hope I can get it like praying to God of please. God gave me give me a raise or please God. Uh, make me skinny and stuff like that but until you do something about it you are never going to kill off that old life you're you're never going to kill it you're never going to end that old life you're always going to repeat the cycle unless you do something about it literally unless you do something about it no more complaining go do something about it my name is mark martinez thank you for listening to the marco martinez show i know this is a completely different one but hey It's just kind of what was on my mind. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.